welcome back to Monster Prom. In the last episode, I gained some money, some fun, and lost some smarts and boldness because whatever. And now I'm gonna go to the bathrooms. That day you skipped class just to hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms, you give plus zero shits. But you gain plus two boldness. You turn to find Miranda staring at the wall and sighing audibly. She clearly has something on her mind. Oh, these bathrooms are so vulgar! If only they were more like the bathrooms back home in Atlantis. Bathrooms so vast and luxurious, many have entered and never have been seen again. I have raised this issue with the principal giant spider, but he insists that the school does not have the budget for such things. He told me to pick one improvement, just one, for the school to implement. But what improvement of all the myriad of possibilities should I select? Oh, I'm paralyzed by the options. Help me! Flood the entire bathroom with seawater and exotic fish, just like home. I even have some underwear. Oh, sorry, underwater interior design ideas. Look, gold-plated robots that help you wipe. Ew. Uh, not so creative. Oh, but of course, the most elementary improvement of all, submersion. Within hours, a team of contractors have arrived to brick up the entrance of the bathrooms, drill a hole in the roof, and dump a bunch of salt water. It's not long before you find Miranda looking even more distraught than before. The toilets, the toilets are not built for underwater use. <laughs> Geysers of filth from the floor to ceiling. I'm not sure how much longer will even. Just then, a huge sploosh echoes through the walls of the spooky high as the newly flooded bathrooms collapse in a shower of salt water and monster shit. <laughs> oh, perfect! Oh, I keep losing shit, but the mixture causes a gnarled, gnarled, slippery tree to grow where the bathrooms were. It has eyes and teeth, and it hates you specifically. You, you lose negative. You lose two charm and one creativity. <laughs> I be fuck it up. It is fun fuck ups. Let's go. Uh, hmm. Who are you? You look snazzy. But I haven't talked to you yet, but I want to know what you are. You're just trying to join me in peace when space untwists itself to reveal an interdimensional Things prince. The most glorious hero. Thank the squid star I found you. I have been confounded by the most fiendish riddle. A riddle that has vexed me for days, nay weeks. The riddle of how to change the ringtone of my new smartphone. The interface is more torturous than my palace labyrinth. For real? You grab the prince's phone and change his ringtone to butts, butts, butts. All about those butts by Booty Bros. My hero. What seems difficult to me is trivial to you. To you. And you even guess which ringtone I desired. A true all-time classic from the sixth dimension. Hey. There's only one way I can repay you, by bestowing upon you a superpower of your choice. I can do that. I'm a prince of another dimension. I can do all kinds of crazy things you don't know about. All kinds of crazy things besides use his phone, apparently. And he really only gives you two superpower options. An ass that won't quit or telepathy. Ooh. I don't know- Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I kind of want to ask that won't quit, but I'm going to select telepathy. The prince whacks you on the head with his telepathy rod and grants you access to, to the minds of others. Right in the middle of high school cafeteria at lunchtime, you're overwhelmed with images of goblin butt problems, GD foot fetishes, two swamp creatures imagining each other naked. It's too much. You plead with the prince to downgrade your ability to telepathy, but only when you're drunk. Very well. Your wish is my command. Perfect. Now you have an excuse to get drunk before every quiz. Until now, it was just regular alcoholism. You gain plus four smarts, despite the loss of brain cells. 
Neat. Thank you, Prince. Let's go. Let's go. I really need to up my creativity. I think that's the auditorium, right? Yeah. That day for rehearsing class play, you can't help but feel you. Uh, you're not as good as the rule requires you to be. There doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil of a many and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain plus two creativity, but you also lose three years of your life as your end of the deal, but who cares? They weren't happening in game anyways. <laughs> you catch Miranda monologuing about her problems to no one. She often does that. It's like she's accustomed to having a royal scribe follow her everywhere she goes. Oh, whatever shall I do about my army? We haven't had proper war in months, and the soldiers are becoming ever so anxious. I've tried sending servants to give them tummy rubs and even put extra leaves and sticks in their cages, but they just kill the servants with the sticks. I never thought managing an entire branch of the military would be so challenging. How could I possibly keep my soldiers entertained? Uh, a thousand pinatas. Divide them in half and make them fight a practice war. That would just cut her. A thousand pinatas! God damn it. Don't you keep up with current events? Our last war was against the pinata people of the Mariana Trench. Even if there were any pinatas left in the world, which there sadly are not, I'm afraid an influx of pinatas would merely remind my poor soldiers that the happy wars years, the ha the happy war years are at an end. That would be cruel, too cruel, even more cruel than what we did to the pinata people. No, don't speak. I will hear no more about this. This explains why you had such a hard time finding a pinata for your last birthday party. It does not, however, explain why you want. No. Why you wanted a pinata at your party, you dork. You lose minus two fun and minus one sparks. Oh, I'm really bad at this game. Let's go. Let's go. Mm, my charm is down. This is charm, I think. No, this is boldness, right? Is this. Which one's fucking charm? I think this is charm. I'm gonna go here. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiating for a truce. After hours of intense uh, diplomacy, you commit to an agreement. What an unexpected twist. You gain 10 righteousness. But this game is so wrong in so many ways that you would be lucky if you could do anything with that. And plus two charm. Yay, I got my charm up. Afterwards, Miranda summons you. It feels weird to be summoned, but you comply. You can't resist her merman goons. Thank you for coming, my dear. I have finally decided to trust you with the most important aspiration. I am destined to be the queen of prom. The royal ascent is nigh. We must prepare. Most of my competition is naive. They foolishly assume the prom queen is purely a ceremonial title. Except Ursula Jr. She is proving to be quite a worthy rival. I respect that. Which is why we must destroy her reputation immediately. Any thoughts? Uh, let's convince everyone that she likes humans. A fart joke. Doesn't take much to make someone look bad in this day and age. You, however, are monsters and went for the total overkill. You hire a Chinese hacker to plant 10 years of pro bono work rescuing human babies from lawnmowers in Ursula's name. At recess, Dr. Baby Love of Baby Love Institute appears out of nowhere and presents her with a humanity award. Yes, this will seriously harm her stand with the evil lawnmower creature uh, contingent. That's an important voting block. They're the ones who keep the schoolyard so tidy you gain two boldness and one smarts. Huzzah! I wasn't going to go for her completely. Let's I just... go. Uh, who the fuck are you? I could talk with you some more or finally get to know who you are. But who are you? 
You find the Slayer sitting alone at the table. Is she even a student or what? Wait, you're choosing to sit with me? For some reason, no one ever intentionally sits next to me. I usually have to ambush them and threaten to kill them. I wonder why. It's a mystery. Anyways, I'm really happy you... I mean, I'm flattered that... I mean, I actually, uh... Wouldn't give a shit about you under normal circumstance, but today I'm on a quest. Yes, that's right. I'm not emotionally vulnerable. I'm just on a quest to slay the werewolf of Wall Street, and I need a monster sidekick. You're gonna help me, obviously. I just need to know what your class is. Are you a fighter? A mage? A cleric? Out with it! Oh, you're something much better. You're a... Uh, party smith? A gun haver? Is that even a class? Practically everyone has guns. You reveal just how many guns you actually have. Holy shit! How can you even carry that many guns? And why are you allowed to have them at school? You have your red biceps to thank for the four <laughs> former and um, the monst monstropolis strong second amendment protection for the latter. Okay, well, do you have silver bullets? Werewolves are only vulnerable to silver bullets. Man, there aren't a color of bullet you don't have. Well, um, alright, let's uh, go on an adventure then. You travel together to Wall Street where you shoot the wolf of Wall Street with your guns. All right, then, uh, thank you. And now I'm going to go ahead and run screaming away from you, if that's all right. It totally is. God bless Monstropolis. You gain plus four boldness. Fuck yeah! All right, let's do something. Let's go somewhere I haven't gone before. I don't think I've gone to the tree yet. The tree's fun? Is that the tree that hates me? Let's do the outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there's like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension and the consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. You notice Vera and Miranda on the edge of the rave with their arms crossed. You dance over to try to find out what's up. I truly want to be excited about this uproarious event, but I'll say what we're both thinking. This rave looks like a techno trash fire. I do not wish to be crude, but it is true. I want to hang out and have a good time, and I can't relax in such a chaotic at environment. I put some thought into this, and I think that the problem is a lack of color coordination. It almost always is. That's why my father painted everyone in the kingdom aquamarine. But... We have no legal authority at this rave. How will we ever coordinate their colors? That's where I'm stuck right now. Frankly, if only there was some way. Filter everyone through this dangerous magic pris uh, prism. Color-seeking German shepherds. Hmm. I do like German shepherds. I always pick the wrong one. You pull out a prism of color separation that's crafted in your AP attack fashion class. You toss into the center of the dance and it lights up like an extremely deadly disco ball. Look, it's sucking in students and spitting them out in lines according to their color of outfits. Why are they screaming? Does that mean it's working? Yes, that's what it means. The prism destroys several students because they can't determine the primary color of their outfits. But that's what they get for not matching. You gain plus two in charm and plus one smarts. Yay! I wanted to meet some other characters. I just keep oh, running into go. Miranda. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. She's always there. She was there when I raved. She was there in the bathrooms. She was even there at the gym. Go to school class. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity of this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Somebody puts a stack over your head and throws you in a car. Oh, a stack over your head throws you in a car. You drive for hours before they let you out and take the sack off. It's clearly the first floor restroom. Mir Miranda is sitting on a makeshift throne while her goons jump in and out of the toilet. I'm glad you came. My 
prom queen campaign is moving on to the next stage. Your experience is crucial for this part. Most of my inner circle are fish, hardly helpful unless genetically engineered beyond recognition. Speaking of which, I need you to help me sneak a three meter tall, heavily armored cod assassin named Tresca into the school. No reason, but if you're friends with that singing harlot Ariel, you better say your goodbyes. Uh, do nothing? Every student at our school is some kind of bizarre monster? We need a diversions. Release the Kraken! Eh. Fish hit drums and a menacing beat culminates in the synchrono- uh, synchrono- Gramiad. Synchronomia. Whatever. This word that I'm having trouble pronouncing, crescendo, you feel a thump from down below, and then a whisper. Oh great, the kraken is struck in the or stuck in the sewers again. Take a plunger and help the seven-ton monster out. You heard the octo puppy, but how could you? You lose minus two charm and minus one fun. Oh. Why do I keep riding into her? I don't want to run into her. Let's go. Let's go. This is assassin again. Let's go chat with these guys. Or him. Can we talk to him? Let's talk with him. You approach Liam and Vera at their table, but before you can sit down, Vera holds up a hand. Stop. This is a cool table where only cool people are allowed. I would agree with that, Vera. With what Vera just said, but agreeing to something is what uncool people will do. Wouldn't you agree, Vera? Nice try, Liam. But I think you're getting away from the point. This interloper still wants to sit with us. Well, if she wants to sit with us, she's going to have to prove that she's as cool as we are. But without, like, trying to prove it. Trying is so uncool. So, what's it going to be? I guess I'm gonna go then, because there's no way anyone could be as cool as Liam. Let me ask you this. Would an uncool person be giving Vera 50 monster dollars right now? Wait! Was that sarcasm? No, of course not. Our Gamma was clearly being totally sincere. There it was again. Are you two doing this on purpose? Now, why on earth would we do that? Gah, I can't tell whether you're being sincere or ironic. It's so, so cool. God, oh, I fucking hate it. I hate it. Everyone knows clear and effective communication is least cool thing of all. You've wooed me with your open disdain for language. I can't tell if you're being serious or not. Exactly. Vera and Liam invite you to sit with them and chat. By the end of lunch, none of them have any idea what anyone else meant. So cool. So totally rad, dude. Let's go. Let's go. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
phase one is getting Liam more Instagram followers. I took the liberty of having my royal spies discover the password to his account so we can give it a total makeover. But what to do? Use his account to post a bunch of porn pictures and bomb recipes. Pay millions of homeless people to follow him. <laughs> oh yes! Solving problems with money is my family specialty. Unfortunately, father canceled my royal credit cards after I had all those land pony ships to our underwater castles and they drowned. But I'm sure you have enough money to accomplish this feat. You totally don't. You decide to cut costs by hiring goats instead of people. But goats don't have thumbs or smartphones, so instead of having them follow him on Instagram, you just have them follow him in real life. <laughs> ah, where'd all these goats come from? Get them away from me. They ate my cashmere phone cozy. This is madness. Exit Liam, pursued by goats. This is a terrible idea, and the goats are so pretty expensive. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Let's Liam. Go. Um, Let's go get some monies. That day you spent some time in the library PC playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares? It's This time it's paid off so fuck you gain plus two money. Scott rolls by happily munching on something. Liam gapes at him appalled. What on earth are you eating, Scott? <laughs> this delicious new f flavor of Fangle's potato chips. Maximum ult to eat double barbecue massacre. Really? Because it looks like raw severed goat head inside of a cardboard tube. Oh yeah, I guess it does. Could have sworn it was potato chips. It's still tasty though. Tasty, tasty. Does wanton environmental destruction sound tasty to you? I don't know. Is that some kind of jerky? No, Scott. Don't you realize that in order to harvest these goat heads, Fangles Incorporated decapitate millions of innocent goats every year? You have like a bunch of goats following you. But what do they do with the bodies of the goats? Nothing. It's horrendously wasteful practice. Oh no, all those poor headless goat bodies running around bumping into things. We have to stop them. Wait, really? I was just trying to make you feel guilty. I didn't actually have a plan of action. But if someone were to suggest one... Write an extremely mean blog post. Assemble an army of vengeful undead goat torsos. <laughs> um, I bet he would like this one. I kind of wanted to say assemble an army of vengeful undead goat torsos. But I kind of want Liam to like me because I like vampires. Write an extremely mean blog post. Hmm. 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 No, this one. Ah, that's a great idea. I'll do it right now. Wait, Scott. I think she meant I should. But it's too late. Scott has already snatched Liam's laptop and started typing. Grr! Mean words! Mean blog post! Grr! He's not even writing words, he's just punching and slapping the keyboard. That's how you know the words are mean, because they're made with punching! <laughs> Before Liam can get his computer back, Scott has already posted his masterpiece, which begins with the immortal line. This nonsense. Fangles is strangely unmoved by this- Oh. Sad day. Let's go. Oh, who is that? It's like a new person up here. <gasps> oh, they're sitting together. I should sit with them. But I want to know who she is. You approach your chosen table to find it already mostly taken up by a coven. They're huddled around some kind of glowing artifact. <gasps> they're witches! But we only get one, not... But we only get one wish, not three. So it's important for all of us to agree before we release the genie. Hope, you've already expressed your wish for a secret hideout with a mini fridge and a foosball table. Faith has argued just uh, fervently for world peace. The world. Okay. But as a leader, I think the most sensible option is a mystic sword that will instantly slay this season's big bad and... 
Open Faith immediately object to Joy calling herself the leader, and the three soon devolve into a shouting match. <clears throat> Amidst all the commotion, you can't help but notice that the wishing lamp is totally unguarded. Without really thinking about it, as if you ever do, you rub the lamp and release the genie and wish for... A bag full of quarters. A machine that can successfully reheat french fries. Ooh. I want a bag full of quarters. Wish granted in! Ow kiss. Um, booms the genie and you feel the reassuring weight of a bag of quarters in your lap. Seriously? You could wish for anything and you wish for a bag of quarters? What? Did you need to do laundry? Do you really, really like arcades? Planning to hit someone over the head? Nope, you just really like quarters. You're like quarter boy! So you're saying we brave the fire lakes of the lower wrath and the two-headed snake of Serpentina and the accountants of Babylon just so you could have a bag of quarters? Basically. And boy, was it worth it. From your perspective, these quarters must be worth at least four money. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Hmm. My creativity is like the worst. Let's let's party hardy. That day during recess, you start uh, a rave. Everything's fine until uh, Juan and a small magical Latino cat asks what you think you're doing. Damn, you didn't remember you sucked at dancing, but you decide to go all in and pretend it's a new dance move apparently called the groovy moussaka Juan looks at you and he asks you to teach him the groovy mous moussaka in no time half the party is following your steps enjoying the groovy mous moussaka or moussaka all together it's a party to remember, you're getting too fun. Cool story to tell your grandkids someday. You're casually reading the latest issue of Monster Magazine when you are rudely interrupted. See, even Argama, a sensible monster with good head on her shoulders, and at least some smarts is reading Monster Magazine. Hey, I'm 16 smarts. Yeah, that's bad because we're warriors, so we need to fight. Scott takes the magazine from you and punches it. Hooray! Let's go solve another major world's major problems. No, Scott. We're social justice warriors. You see, our gamma, ever since our major success with the Fangle's goat head debacle, we've taken it upon ourselves to stand up against injustice by punching magazines. No, Scott. As you no doubt noticed, Monster Magazine's se sexiest monster alive this year is Count Victor Von Musselbod the werewolf prince bodybuilder. That makes him the fifth royal werewolf bodybuilder in a row to earn the title. What about those of us with leaner physiques? What about our representation? So now we're endeavoring to get Monster Magazine to name someone who's more marginalized community as their sexiest creature alive. We just need to figure out a way to convince them since I guess punching the magazine wasn't good enough. Psh, that's easy. All you need to do is solve everyone's body and image image issues forever is make your own version of the magazine featuring a three-winged chupacabra on the cover lean heavily into the warrior parts storm monster magazine and hold editor-in-chief captive until he promises to stop exclusively promoting one aesthetic as a pinnacle of monster sexiness uh. Okay, so normally I would choose this one, but this word right here is associated with my ex-mother-in-law, ex-step-mother-in-law. Uh, so I want literally nothing to do with this, so I'm gonna pick this one. Oh yeah, good plan, I love being a warrior. I'll admit it does sound like an attention-grabbing demonstration, if nothing else. Hot diggity dog! With that, you're off to storm the Monster Magazine headquarters using the element of surprise. Your second favorite element, right after nitrogen. You're able to overpower Monster Magazine security and march straight into the editor-in-chief's office. We demand better presentation. We demand better to be warriors. It's time 
to use our weapons and our fists and our fighting to sit down and have a heartfelt conversation about the damage to look damage lack of representation can do to our society. The heartfelt conversation is very felt by the heart and quite conversationally. It delves deeply into the editor-in-chief's own deeply rooted body image issues and how idealizing werewolves makes him feel more comfortable. You all agree that he should be in therapy and he agrees that he should do some special intro issue of Monster devoted to all kinds of beauty. Hooray! You gained two fun and one charm. Hey! Huzzah! Who will be- who will you ask to the prom? I'll ask myself! Uh... He's kinda cute, I'm not gonna lie. I should've wooed him at all, but... I think these two would probably say yes. Maybe even him. Hmm... She's Toad's adorbs! And he's a vampire. But she's a princess. But he's a vampire. Hmm. But she's pink. And he's a hipster. And she's a cunt. And I'm just adorable! Uh I'll go with Miranda. Ask Miranda to the prom? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. You finally pluck up the courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Eck, my sister told me that I could get a disease if I date commoners. Stuff like crabs or poverty. I must decline. Damn, you're bad at interacting with people. To repent for the sins of making such a bad choice, you were forced to walk around the school in the nude, uh, accompanied by a nun who chanted shame over and over ringing a bell. Classic. Ah. This is a play school, but a bit overwater-ish for my taste. Most likely to devour your own children to survive. That's that's accurate. Oh, it's the end! Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd three weeks of our lives. Oh my god, she's adorable! Who is she and I want her? Can I ask her to date me? Who, who's zombie boy? Oh, I think that's one of the people you can pick. You can pick these. These three? These, I don't know. She is really cute. I like her. Eh. Alright, uh, after Monster Prom, we kept living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? It, as it always does, life happens and it was wonderful. Miranda uses her vast surf knowledge to get a job handpicking the best surfs for other people. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her surfs to do the work. Liam started a... Uh, I iconoclastic band? Iconolastic? I don't know what this word is. A uh, band that broke all conventions. Their latest album has been a hit. Has It has no songs at all. It's an album is actually just a banana set on fire. And be sure Liam doesn't care if you don't get it. Vera realized she was a character in a video game which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power because she is not part of the game. She plays the game. So be careful. Maybe now she's the one pulling your strings. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in a war called Youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were really ready to start. Nee! This was really fun. I'm gonna play it again. Uh, but probably in a new video. Oh, it's so dark! Uh, I think I want to try again and aim for that fire dude. Alright, uh, so anyways, I'm gonna leave this episode here. This was actually really fun. So I'm gonna do one more episode of it. I'm gonna do a short game and we'll see where it goes from there. 
Uh, I might pick a different character. I might not. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Uh, so anyways, if you enjoyed this series and you want to see more from me, then please subscribe and do all that YouTube shit. And in the next episode, we're going to do a short game and power through it. So I'll see you then.